I'm not gonna lie. I think I think you're gonna like this one. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. Uh, Lent is coming in a couple days. Today, uh, we're gonna talk about the waters of the Jordan, the Lord's baptism, its connection uh, to the desert. And then what the church proposes to us for Lent, this increased time of prayer, uh, fasting, and almsgiving. We want to begin by looking and, and seeing the connection between Jesus' baptism and then his journey into the desert. Right? And in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3 ends with Jesus being baptized, right? And then the, the heavens are rent open and the Father speaks these words like, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Then chapter 3 ends. Chapter 4 immediately Jesus goes into the desert. He's driven into the desert um, by the Spirit. So, let, like, let's look at this and, and let's look at this connection, right? Because it's Jesus is baptized for us, right? He goes into the waters of baptism, and we and we kind of say that he makes these baptismal waters holy. And and at this moment, right uh, at the shore, uh, the Father he pulls open the heavens and speaks these words: "You are my beloved Son. You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." The Father reveals Himself. And, and speaks and speaks his love uh, for the sun, right? And then Jesus goes into the desert, right? And equally, Jesus goes into the desert uh, for us. And we can say, as he made the waters holy at baptism, he makes he makes the desert, he makes the sand uh, holy for us in his forty days in the desert. He makes our tri- trials and our struggles and all of that holy. And what I want to say is this: as at the waters, as the heavens were rent open. It's actually going into the desert that, that our hearts are rent open, that our insecurities are rent open, that our, our, our struggles and our weaknesses are revealed so that, like at the Jordan, the Father can speak these words into our lives. Like, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. It's actually in the struggles, the encountering of our weakness, our need of a Savior, that God can speak even more deeply and more intimately into all of the recesses of our lives, our hearts, our souls, this truth. Like, I am good father and you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter and I love you and I am pleased in you. It's actually in the season of Lent by entering into the desert that we're, we're invited to kind of do some of the work which creates the space for these beautiful words to speak even more deeply into all aspects of ourselves. What's an example, right? You're getting fired from your job, right? And you have to find a new job. And, and in your job and in this place and in your prayers, like, okay, I know the Lord loves me and he's with me and I'm his beloved son, I'm his beloved daughter. But now, like now I go into this wilderness. Now I go into this desert of insecurity where now I have to like, there's this future before me. There's this losing of a job, uh, a need for finding a new job, a need for being dependent and growing and trust again in God in this difficult situation. In rending kind of our control from our future and rending our, our security from us um, as we follow the Lord and we cry out to him and we allow him to be provident uh, in our lives. Uh, as as we journey with him in this new struggle, this new desert, like into this aspect of our life, again, the Lord can speak these words like, I am good, I am Father, you are beloved, I am with you. And so it's, it's in these temptations and these trials and these struggles that the space is created uh, for the Lord to, to speak even more deeply into our hearts. This is a terrible image in some ways, but it's the only one that I have. Like if you're trying to like season like a potato or something like that and you want to get like the salt and the butter and all of that, deep inside of it when you're baking it, like you like stab it a bunch with a fork, right? And the fork creates these pockets, these space, so that the goodness can sink in even more deeply. And in a certain sense, in a certain sense, not a very analogous sense, but in a certain sense, uh, by going into the desert uh, in our Lenten practices, like we're kind of poking these holes in these different areas of our lives and of our hearts so that the, the goodness of our belovedness and his fatherhood can speak even more deeply into our hearts. All right, so let's now relate this to prayer, fasting, almsgiving. I propose, I propose that like when the church invites us to pray uh, and to a deepened prayer uh, during Lent, it's like the Lord wants us to do this, this holy violence to our schedules. Like there's a holy violence done to the heavens at the Jordan. There's a holy violence that's done as Jesus goes in, into the wilderness. And, and the Lord wants us to do, to rend our schedule, to rend our schedule. It's going to hurt. There's going to be a sacrifice. There's going to be a pain, but to create space, so that the Lord can speak even more deeply into the silence, right? To step away from the control and the comfort and maybe the, some of the insecurity that going into kind of quiet might bring with it. So that the Lord, as he says in Hosea, like I, I'm going to draw her into the desert and speak tenderly to her heart. Like by, 
by doing this little violence, by rending our schedules, the Lord can speak tenderly to our hearts. Fasting, like fasting, there's, there's like a holy violence of fasting that we're asked to do against kind of our own, our own bodies, our own uh, desires, our own kind of security again that we can find in food. By fasting, an appropriate amount, and we'll qualify that uh, before we end, um, it can create space again to be more dependent on the Lord, to encounter our weakness and to have this experience like, Lord, I can't even give up this little thing for this day. Lord, speak your truth. Speak your love uh, into my heart here. So, so we do this little violence uh, to our bodies. We rend kind of our, our diet so that the Lord can speak tenderly uh, to our hearts, right? And then almsgiving. And almsgiving, right, is this, again, it's like this, this holy violence to our checkbooks, essentially to our kind of selfish approach to life that we've accumulated these things and we want to use them for our own pleasure or our own enjoyment. We're going to rend this, like we're going to make some sacrifice, do a little holy violence in being generous so that in our generosity and in our some of the doing without that comes along with extra giving, again, the Lord can speak tenderly to, to, my, to our hearts. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. As Jesus goes into the desert, like, so at the Jordan, the heavens are rent, the, the, the Father speaks this truth. As we go into the desert and as we, as we rend our, our schedules, as we, as we rend kind of our diets and, our, uh, and our, our checkbooks, this is going to create some of the space so that the truth and the goodness of the Father's love and our identity can, can speak even more deeply into our very lives. Now, one sort of tool for judging how much, if you will, holy violence to do. Uh, the brothers, recently myself and, and some of our young postulants, we had this trip where we actually go into the desert uh, for three weeks. And it's a pretty intense trip. And, and it's part of this whole spirituality that we're talking about here. But our guides kind of have this way of distinguishing, clarifying what we're trying to do. Like they're, they're, they talk about this comfort zone, the challenge zone, and then the panic or the crisis zone, right? And so rendering our schedules and our diets and, and our checkbooks, like we don't want to just be in the comfort zone. Like we want there to be a little pinch. We want there to be this challenge, right? So we want to enter into this challenge zone, but, but right, without going into this panic or crisis area. Like, so you want to find this sweet spot. In particular, um, when it comes to dealing with giving up food, right? If it's, if it's more than giving up a, like a particular kind of extra, like I'm going to give up soda or alcohol or sweets. If it's a specific really cut back on, on overall calories, I'm really going to encourage you to, at the very least, speak to one other mature adult to make sure they hear about it. Um, ideally, it's a trusted priest. Because again, like in that area, especially, like we don't want to go into this, the panic or, or the crisis area. But we do, well, we are still encouraged to enter into, uh, into the challenge. So my brothers and sisters, this is what it's about, right? We're going into Lent, not just to do a little sacrifice to check a box. We're going into to Lent so that again, the heavens and our hearts may be rent open so that the Father may speak even more deeply and ever anew into our lives. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Looking forward to making this Lenten journey with you. More to come on Lent. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Look forward to being with you all again, again next week. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. Peace. God bless y'all.